Hello, Stephen here from uh, First Conversion. I had a number of requests to share the slides from my Brighton SEO talk. The slides don't make much sense by themselves, so I decided to make this quick video so that you get the slides, but you also get my commentary, and it's going to allow me to uh, do some interesting stuff as well as we go through. I've added a few extra little bits and pieces as well, because I didn't have a lot of time during Brighton SEO, so this is the full unabridged version. This is basically about testing Facebook advertising and it's from me spending a lot of time, a lot of money to solve a problem with Facebook advertising for a startup. So the startup environment provides a great opportunity because there's a lot of money um, and there's a solution that must be found which is a bit different to how things work um, agency side when you get a little bit of money and if you don't find a solution you kind of move on to something else so everything you're going to see is from spending a lot of money and a lot of time figuring the stuff out the hard way so the key to using Facebook well the key to using social for pretty much anything is to get away from the one-to-one -one and to get into one-to-many so Google is a Google pay-per-click ads are a great example of one-to-one -one advertising. You pay for your ad to be there, you pay for each click. So you pay a dollar, you get one click. That person buys or they don't buy. But you never get more than the one person. Facebook is different. Facebook, where people win on Facebook, is where they can manage to get one to many to work. Where you can spend one dollar, but actually get many people to click. Because the content or the story, or however you're saying it, is what people want to share but you've also technically put it in the way that people will actually share it. So here's an example of that really. On the left you've got uh, SMX giving me just a standard advert. Work in marketing, yada yada yada. I click that ad, maybe I sign up, maybe I don't. It never goes beyond one to one. On the right you've got Coca-Cola who spent some time making some content and because they've made content that content can be shared. You can see it's got 171 thumbs up, it's got 31 uh, comments, and it's got 13 reshares where people have taken this and shared it onto their own Facebook pages. So for the money that Coca-Cola have put in, they now have a whole lot of people who have seen this. Um, this is probably the thing I ran into first, and I ran into this in the first startup I worked at, where we just threw some money at Facebook it didn't work and we went, nah, it doesn't work. Um, that's because we were in the false Facebook learning curve. So the false Facebook learning curve is where you learn the mechanics of how to put an ad live on Facebook. And you get there and you think, wow, I can put an ad live. This is quite simple, it's quite easy, I must know everything there is to know. You put some ads live, maybe you give it a couple of months, you spend a couple of grand. You go, wow, no, it's not really for us. In most cases, because you're stuck in that kind of one-to-one, -one because that's what you know already. It's what you know from advertising on Bing. It's what you know from advertising on Google, this one-to-one -one relationship. And Facebook has many ways you can advertise in that one-to-one -one relationship, but it also has many ways in you which allow you to open the door to the one-to-many relationship. So here's the real learning curve. This is what I got into actually learning what was going on with Facebook is when I had a method of testing the messages to specific Facebook segments then everything took off so being competent with putting an ad live means absolutely nothing having this method having this commitment to testing over time and having the tools to do it that's when you really start to learn so as a there are a number of really fundamental differences between Google Ads and Facebook Ads. I'm just going to talk over probably the biggest one, which is Google visitors, I think of them as being in a stream. They're like fish in a stream. On day one, somebody's looking to buy shoes is pretty much of the same kind of conversion intent as somebody who comes in day 100 and is looking to buy shoes. So the variable that you have there is your ad. Over time, you can improve your ad because the people that are coming are generally the same kind of people. So compare that to something like Facebook, where what I'd say is visitors are like fish in ponds. Each pond is a different segment. So it could be mothers between 30 to 45 who live in London. It could be um, 
boys between 18 and 24 who live in India and like football. It could be all these different types of things. And each time you make an ad, you have to be very aware, aware of which segment you're showing that ad to. So, you know, on day one, if you're selling shoes and you're Adidas, maybe you're selling to people who've liked Adidas on Facebook. But by day 100, you've used all those Adidas people and you're now on to like maybe people who like hip hop. And then, you know, those segments have very different purchase intents. They have very different views on the brand. And it's very much more difficult to take that ad that you've got on day 100 and compare it to, to the ad you did on day one because you've got such very different segments, very different groups of people that you're showing those ads to. So that really boils down into the fact that you can compare Google Ads over time. So generally, as you test your advertising, your click-through rate or your conversion rate or whatever the, the number is that you care about is going to get better over time as your ad gets better. Because your only variable really is the ad. That is completely the opposite on Facebook. It becomes very, very difficult to compare Facebook ads over time. And what you see here is an example of if we say the blue line on the left represents if I'm selling a new Adidas trainers, um, people who've liked Adidas on Facebook. So it gives me a very high click-through rate and a very high conversion rate on day one and that slowly tapers off over time. And then I have to go and look for a new segment and that might be anybody that likes any footwear brand on Facebook and that gives me the red line which is like yeah they're pretty good pretty likely to convert and that tapers off and then I'm like well the green line is a segment of anybody who likes fashion or clothing brands on Facebook You see each time as we go along we get a completely different segment and we get a segment that's generally less likely to convert even though our ads are actually getting better over time so when we get to the light blue curve on the right, we have the best ad, but if I compared it, its conversion rate to the conversion rate I started with, it may actually have a much worse conversion rate. And that is because the segments, the people you're showing the ads to, make such a great impact on the click-through rate or the conversion rate over time. So this is why it becomes, this is why it's tricky, but also why you have to be very careful about measuring the improvements in your ads and your ad text over time. So the mechanics of Facebook ads, basically any idiot can do them. And really just go to facebookstudio.com if you want to figure out how to put ads on Facebook. So I'm not really going to spend too much time talking about that at all, um, except just to talk a little bit about the third party tools. Um, these tools are cool when you get beyond the most basic level of Facebook. The software that Facebook provides is really very basic um, they have a very difficult job because there's a lot of moving parts to uh, doing Facebook advertising and nobody's really solved the user interface bit very well. So these tools, these third party tools hook into Facebook via the APIs um, and they do a couple of things. One, they try and make the UI a bit better so you can figure out what's going on when you're placing um, Facebook ads, but they also try and add a layer of analysis so you can figure out, okay, this ad is performing better than that ad. So if I just flick over here, so this is Quaya. Um, the reason I like Quaya is the $79 a month. It is by far the cheapest uh, option I've found. Um, it's I tried it about nine months ago, it was quite rudimentary, so it's on my list to try again. They've got a 30-day free trial. If you get to that point where you've, you know, you've got um, 50 campaigns running and you're thinking, man, this is a pain in the backside, give Quay a try as the first step up. You've got Social Move. These guys are based out in France. Um, they are definitely the next level up as is Glow. So both Social Move and Glow will take 5% of your ad spend. Um, Glow are based in London, so if you're in London they're probably good to go with because you can speak to them. Um, and they're very focused, you know, they're looking definitely at ROI. So if you have a massive account and you want to improve your ROI and you're based in London, Glow is pretty good. Um, 
The other one I mentioned was social.com, which is part of Salesforce. I haven't used it, but if you're using Salesforce already, have a look at social.com. Maybe it's a very easy thing for you to plug in. So tools aside, the next important thing to look at is the message. And I'm just going to run through how I approach building ads. So if we take this ad here from Quaya, so they were obviously retargeting me on Facebook. Um, there's three parts that I care about. I care about the image, I care about the title, and I care about the text. So the image is to draw my eye, which they do quite well with that solid color. Um, the title is, I use it as a yes or a no, like an on and off switch. Is this relevant to me, yes or no? So in my case, Facebook Ads tool, when I read that, I was like, yep, that's interesting to me. And then I use the text to say, to to encourage the click, really. So the text is doing the, the, um, the word I've momentarily forgotten, um, is encouraging me to click through. So I'm going to show you a few ways that I come up with ideas. So one of the things that happens is that as soon as you actually have a method for testing things, you then need to find things to test. So if you go to first conversion to the Facebook advertising tips page, you will see I have broken a lot of this stuff down. Um, so this basically just looks at images and I over a couple of months was just screenshotting every every Facebook ad that stood out I just screenshot it and dump it into a PowerPoint document and then after I had I think in this case 55 different ads I sat down and I started to group them into why these things were were standout ads if you look at Facebook and you just have it's just a mass of information right so an ad that's gonna stand out in here there's got to be a good reason for it and I decided, well, if I analyze these reasons, maybe that can help me with my advertising. So you've got a lot of stuff on the visual side around lines. You see this big green line, this Moz ad, this big arrow pointing at the text. People do a lot of stuff around color. People do a lot of stuff around space, like making sure that they use this white space to make sure their message is clearer to people. Um, I love this one from The Guardian where they've not only used the white space in the image, they've used the white space in the ad by just having these two words. Perspective, you know, and it goes on. There's a number of different ways people do really interesting things. The the way Facebook restricts marketers makes some marketers very, very creative. All the stuff around distortion, people have played a lot with putting text on images, and it goes on and on and on. So have a look through that page, give yourself some creative inspiration if you like. And I suggest you start to do the same thing with titles and the same thing with these texts. You know, make more sales. That's quite interesting. Is that a good way to end it off? Free solar insulation. You know, the capitalizing stuff at the start, making the free bit impactful without then having a whole lot of other text. Is that something you can test out? So it's very important to collect all these things just to give you a base of things to go and test from. So this is quite recent. I added this one at the last minute and this is going to allow me to go into it in slightly more depth. So using dark posts. So what a dark post does is it allows you to create a Facebook post um, without putting it live so that on your wall nobody will see the post but you can still then do um, Facebook ads to this hidden post. So if you're a company, let's say again you're, you're Adidas and you're selling shoes, you can create five hidden posts and each post can target a different messaging. So your new shoes are coming out, one messaging is around the price, another messaging is around the technology in the shoes, another messaging maybe in the um, how quickly you can deliver the shoes and you could send maybe 500 people to each post and see which of those messages resonated the most with people. And you can say, okay, well, the one about the technology had the most shares and had the most likes and had the most comments, so then let's put that one live 
on the home page. So you can use these dark posts to figure out what's the most effective messaging to put on your home page so you don't waste people's attention with substandard messaging. Um, there's also a lot of very um, interesting and underhanded things you can do with this so just let your mind wander. Um, so the method basically how what are we doing when we are testing ads and what can we learn from it. So just to hammer this point home again segmentation makes a massive impact. So here's an example from a medical trial in the US. Um, I was able to target people by people who had liked pages about the illness. It happened to be an illness that targeted uh, black and Latin women so I could then kind of target by association as well so what you see here is this targeted campaign is where people had liked the actual Facebook pages of um, businesses or charities that helped people um, who had that illness and basically you can see the difference in the click-through rates so where I had the best targeting I had the highest click-through rate which gave me the best cost per lead you can see the, the better conversion rate where I kind of had to target by association you know anybody who'd like to black celebrity um, black female celebrity on Facebook or Spanish female celebrity on Facebook was kind of targeting by that association um, and although it did work, it didn't have quite as good a click-through rate and it had a much uh, higher cost per lead, which is what I really cared about. So where you can get this highly specific targeting and match up with a really great message, you're going to get the best. I guess that's, that's pretty obvious. But if you know the important numbers, if my cost per lead um, that makes my business work is, let's say, £75 a lead, then that makes this this associations also worth my while. So this is kind of the meat and bones of it. When we're looking at images, so before we were using any testing, we're just throwing stuff up, going on gut feeling, saying, oh, we think this will work, or we think this will work, or we read something that some guy did this thing and it worked for him, so let's do that as well. Um, but when we started to test, we were quite amazed by the the big difference things made. So here is one of the things, you know, this is one of the first tests I did, um, throwing some images in. And we can see that immediately that the hands just don't work. So when I get to the next iteration um, of ads, I'm going to remove the hands and I'm going to do things around people's faces. And the same thing with um, the titles. Now, if I wasn't testing, I could have gone with either of those titles. They're, you know, they're kind of the same. You have no way of knowing. But once we've tested, we can see there's a massive difference in the cost per lead. The cost per lead being the lighter box. And it's significantly lower on where we've managed to ask a question. Right? So we've gone from this position where oh, they're all about the same to going, oh my goodness, this one is significantly better than the other one. So the next time I come to creating the next batch of ads, I'm going to create things around questions or I'm definitely not going to use the worst performer and I'm going to pick something really different to test against. And we found the same thing here with the text that we used. So you can see because we've used multiple variants multiple variations of the title, the image, and the text, I now have a really great idea for the next iteration of my ads what definitely not to include. So here's another example. This was a test um, for eating yogurt to help you overcome dust mite allergies. And this first eight was our first test picture of a dust mite or a picture of somebody eating yogurt with two different titles and two different um, texts. The second one we found in the first iteration we found that the bug worked really well so we decided to test a second bug to see if it was maybe the color or was it the fact that an ugly bug something ugly is attracting clicks and in the third iteration we put in some people that were obviously allergic. 
So what we find is that the click-through rate was best for the bugs. The conversions were best for the bugs, but there were some conversions for this guy with hay fever. The cost per leads, this thing we cared about, was really much better when we had these bugs. So the key thing is you can test, and I think a lot of people do, they, they they know that they can't really go on their gut and they kind of use click-through rates but what we'll see is click-through rates are a really bad way um, or a really bad thing to use if you're trying to improve your Facebook ads in this case we had um, a body text where we had a clear winner but in the titles it didn't really make much difference at all so here we know okay next next round we're definitely not going to use the worst body text. We're definitely not going to use the bad images. And actually, we'll just pick one of these titles and then we'll create another title that's very different. And see if by creating, by putting all these very, very different um, variants into the system, we can get big wins all the time. So the results, really. So from the first iteration to the second iteration we managed to improve the cost per click quite significantly but the thing I really care about is improving the cost per lead right so we've managed to drive down the cost per lead and kind of a, a by the by if you have the system what you can do is you can spend a, a limited amount on your learning rounds and when you hit something you think okay now we figured out you know we've really dialed in now we know what's going on then you increase your budget. And this is the same campaign, but now we've gone through all three iterations. You can see we've continued to drive the cost per click down, and I've continued to drive the cost per lead down quite significantly in this case. And again, you know, as I've gone through each iteration, I've lowered the budget, and I've put most of my budget into the best performing set of ads and you can see the conversion rate here four percent and this was all running all three of these um, campaigns were running on the same segment of people so I've really managed to up the conversion rate and really drive down the cost per lead quite significantly from my starting position and I think that's that's one of the real takeaways here is it's very easy to say yeah of course we should be doing testing and you do testing but you can make really massive gains if you do testing correctly it's not small gains it's massive gains you know by by the end of this we had the number of conversions or leads that we needed to but if we'd been going through more and more and more iterations I'd been able to drive this cost per lead further and further and further down so here's maybe one of these non obvious things is sometimes you think you have something dialed in that you've got this winner and then you just go and you're improving this winner like we had with the bed bugs not the bed bugs the uh, dust mites um, we think dust mites work so let's get more and more ugly dust mites but sometimes that can take you down a path and you kind of ignore other things so it's an example from <laughs> human history really so if you went on the right hand side you can see there's iterations down the right but ultimately they turn into a dead end or if you'd just taken the right hand path you would have missed all the opportunity that still existed on the left hand path so the thing is when you're dialing it in you need to keep throwing in like all these wild cards all these really different things in case you can hit well with the intention really of hitting upon something that works significantly better than the path you're going on now and here's a great example so after a couple of rounds you know, we thought, man, these ugly bugs, like the uglier we can make something, the better it's going to be. But I had seen that the, the guy that was sneezing had done okay. So I thought, well, let's throw in an even more obviously sneezing guy. So what we get here is click-through rate. Like the uglier the thing is, the higher the click-through rate. But the thing we really care about is conversions. And it turns out the allergic guy converted better, which gave him a better cost per lead which is the thing I cared about. So once you get into this, you you find that you can really start to manipulate click-through rates, but you've got to keep an eye on the number that you really care about. In my case, it was cost per lead, and that's the number I had to keep an eye on. So if you are improving 
Facebook ads or any ads really just on the basis of click-through rate you can really come unstuck so those are some examples there are a lot of things that need improvement in the system so the Facebook system is quite new in terms of ads if you think of the Google system it's been running for ages now and they've had a lot of people it's had a lot of emphasis it's where they make billions and billions and billions um, and Google has quite a, a mature, shall we say, um, pay-per-click offering, where Google's really, where Facebook's really just getting into it. So the two things that I really need um, is confidence intervals and even delivery of ads. And these things are quite tied together. So in traditional conversion rate optimization, you get. Um, a chance to beat the original ad. So you'll see here these are controls the different um, pages that were being tested and you get well this page works 10% better than you know the standard page but it also gives you a degree of certainty that that thing is correct and that's really what was missing or what is missing from the um, the third-party Facebook tools. They can tell me that something is 10 or 20 or 30 percent better than something else but they don't give me the degree of certainty and that is a lot to do with the fact that they don't give an even delivery of ads over time. So it may they, they find it very difficult to work out that degree of certainty but as a marketer, as somebody who wants to know that the decisions that we're making are based on solid numbers this degree of certainty needs to come into the system. So if one of either the third party tools or Facebook really um, can implement even delivery then we should be able to get the confidence intervals pretty easily. Um, the thing I have found with Facebook ads is whatever Facebook is using to pick winners it's incredibly aggressive. So um, even on the Google system if you, you don't you've got a couple of, of different ways you can you can set the delivery of your ads you can just say even delivery and then you make the decision of what's better or worse or you could tell Google look um, you decide so when it when one ad significantly outperforms another ad just keep showing the good ad um, and I've had a lot of experience using that over the years and then using Facebook they are so aggressive in choosing a winner that quite often actually I have no idea what the basis is for choosing the winner because they will not have run the other ads enough to give any type of confidence um, so I think that's probably a very fundamental issue that Facebook needs to solve in how they deliver ads you know for it to be relevant to marketers but there's also two great opportunities so the dark post that I spoke of earlier so what I've shown here is how you test ads You've got standard conversion rate optimization software that will test landing pages. Dark posts give you the ability to test that bit in between, test the actual content of your Facebook posts. And I think that's a huge win for everybody that's, that's marketing on Facebook. Um, and the other, the other big win really is for medium-sized clients. Um, there is so much volume going through the Facebook system when you're doing Facebook ads that you can really test your messaging on Facebook and then import that into Google Pay for Click. So the, I have a lot of clients where I can get a lot of really great data out of Facebook just because the ads are so and show many times so many times where they, there's just not enough click through data or enough impression data in um, Google to know um, that one ad is significantly better than another. So it's much easier for me to figure that out using Facebook that you know for my my shoes that I'm trying to sell people are all really like the fact that they get um, you know that this amazing new technology and that's a much better seller than the fact that it's really cheap. Of course there are differences and you would still need to test it but you can use Facebook to give you a really nice bit of insight into maybe where you want to start on Google as well. So I hope that has been helpful. Give me an email, give me a shout on Twitter. Cheers.